Hello, I'm Ohio Governor Mike DeWine. Thank you. Thank you for caring for young Ohioans who have complex needs. It certainly is not easy work, but it's what we must do. I want you to know we are here to support you. Through innovative pilot programs and training programs, such as this one, our state is providing resources. I'm committed to making sure every Ohio child lives up to their God-given potential. And that's a commitment you'll find throughout our administration across different state agencies. So, thanks. Thanks again for your dedication. Together, together, we can help make a brighter future for these children and their families. Supporting youth with intensive and complex needs. For many, the road from childhood to adult life has never been completely smooth and straight. And today's youth face some potential obstacles that didn't exist a generation ago. There are some detours and turns along the way that have always existed for some youth, but through better information are now understood in new ways. In Ohio, as in many other states, we have various agencies at the state and county levels designed to support youth and their families as they face a wide variety of challenges. The reality, however, is that these issues often overlap. Many of today's youth require services from multiple agencies with multiple points of contact. But what if there was a better way? What if all these agencies could work together to form a stronger network to better support the needs of youth and their families? Welcome to Module 1 of Supporting Youth with Intensive and Complex Needs. This module series is based on this recognition by Governor DeWine and leaders at the state agencies that serve our youth. Without question, we can be more effective in providing what youth and families need when they need it through a more cohesive approach. It's also based on an understanding of the need for consistent, easily accessible training for frontline staff working directly with youth, the direct support professionals. The series is made up of nine modules. This first module provides a broad overview of multi-system youth, the challenges they face, the needs that may result, and the supports that can help. The modules that follow will go deeper into these issues, providing important information that will better prepare you to support these youth. As a direct support professional, the role you play in the lives of youth and their families is important. Simply put, the work you do makes lives better. The goal of this series is to give you a better roadmap, some guidance to help you make the road to adulthood a little smoother for the people you support. Let's begin with the definition. When I think about multi-system youth, what that means to me is that the kind of needs that that child has really demands or requires that a couple of different systems work together. Meaning that different sectors of, of our um, child-serving agencies are involved in their well-being. So that may include kids involved in juvenile justice, developmental disabilities, child welfare, children's services, or with mental health and behavioral health services. So many times in an organization like state government, we like to compartmentalize people. So you might have a child who has a developmental disability, and we immediately think, okay, well, that child is part of that system and, and, and you know, finds their greatest care in that system. Or a child that has uh, a learning disability or needs special education as part of their school experience, then it's the Department of Education. But we're kidding ourselves because many of those students have multiple issues and find themselves needing care from different parts and pieces of the system that has been structured to, to tend to those needs. Here in Ohio, we recognize the need for various entities to come together to serve these youth. This intense focus on multi-system youth in our state is also due to the fact that the numbers for all ages are on the rise. The increases that we're seeing as far as age range goes is we're seeing an increase from 15 to 18 years old, and we're also starting to see an increase from the 10-year-old range uh, uh, to about 12. The need has been higher than we ever could have dreamed, especially for K through three. So, I mean, I can tell you the number of outreach calls we've got to our school program where teachers are saying, we can't manage 
this five-year-old? The multi-system youth teams that I work with uh, typically range in age around 10 years old and can go all the way up through their school years and even beyond, um, sometimes younger. State and local agencies have recognized that there is an increase in the numbers of youth with intense and complex needs. But why are we seeing this increase? There can be a variety of reasons. It could be a drug exposure. It could be the family environment. It could be, you know, it could be some instability in the family environment. Uh, in addition, we've seen an increase in grandparents being the sole provider. We are much more aware now of the impact of trauma on kids. And, you know, thinking about whether it's the natural disasters or, you know, some of the violence that kids experience. The way we diagnose certain psychiatric conditions has changed dramatically. Um, awareness has increased in significant ways. More resources are available to families and people are speaking up. We have fierce advocates in our among our family members and, and others who are involved in multi-system youth uh, delivery of care. I think a lot of it is, is painted by the lens that we look through. And I think we're getting better and better at looking at the root problem that kids and families are facing and not just the symptoms that may pop up. Clearly, because of the intense and complex needs, variety of root causes, and the increase in numbers, the idea of agencies working together is critical to create better outcomes for these youth. Collaboration in state agencies is obviously always important, uh, but more so when you're dealing with multi-system youth or youth, youth accessing multiple state systems. By the, by the nature of their needs, um, it, it really requires that type of coordination and interaction uh, at all levels, but particularly at the state level. The best thing you can do, I really think, is the leadership and direction out of the state. We've got multiple state agencies. And so if you can build consistency, eliminate duplication, but you set the lead. And if you set the lead in consistency and clear direction out of the state, then you can replicate that and model that at the local level. And when those policies align, then it becomes a lot clearer at the local level, and it's even more clear for families. These are the different resources that you have potentially available. These are where they come from, but they are gonna seem seamless to you. That's the ideal, that's the conceptual way in which you approach this. Nothing is as simple as that always, but that's why you start at the state, you form that clear direction. These youth are at high risk for long-term dependency. To help them successfully transition to adulthood, it is imperative that state partners work together. Unfortunately, when there's a lack of coordinated effort among various agencies, outcomes can be tragic for youth and their families. I heard a family share that they had to relinquish custody to JFS in order for their child to get the residential treatment they needed. And they said they walk into IEP meetings now, not able to sign off on their own child's IEP in order to pay for the services that that child needs. These are the type of issues that are real. The community has to come together to help them. That not one system alone is not geared toward um, or able to manage all the things that get presented um, by that youth. So whether it's an educational issue or it's a behavioral health issue or it's a developmental issue, juvenile justice issue, et cetera, we need help and collaboration across systems to make the help uh, as comprehensive as it needs to be. We've established the importance of coordination between various agencies and partners to support these youth, but in order to be effective, we first need to have an understanding of what they need. And these needs are different for each individual, so they should be evaluated on a person-by-person -person basis. With that understanding, how can we effectively plan for supports and services that make a difference? Unfortunately, intervention planning has often been focused on eliminating or reducing symptoms or problem behaviors. As opposed to uncovering the core issues, we need to shift from trying to stop symptoms and shift our focus to increasing resilience, supporting and facilitating additional skills, personal connections, and the things that they're gonna to need to move forward as opposed to focusing entirely on what they're struggling with. We need to focus on what do they need to get through it. So what are some of the issues that need to be addressed for every youth who has served through multiple systems? These might include things like health and wellness, 
assistance with daily routines, trauma-informed care, specialized, focused, individualized education, meaningful social connections, coping and regulation skills, and effective communication. Now that you are aware of some of the possible needs of youth, a final consideration is ensuring interventions are available in the youth's community. After all, understanding what is needed is just a starting point. Supports and interventions need to be proactive and timely. Primarily, what we see is that they weren't connected to services early enough. The other issue that we see and why they need more intense services is just due to the lack of services that they've received you know, up until the time of crisis. So um, what we are trying to do is put together a system of support that really focuses on you know, in-home uh, support before the crisis happens. It would have been very helpful um, if the education was more available at the beginning. You know, by the end, we figured out a lot about his disabilities, a lot about how to help him, but those first years were very difficult. Uh, we didn't know, and we had to go great lengths to find that information. Some of these helpful early interventions might include things like occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, counseling, respite, and others. These supports need to be consistently available because they provide a structure that improves the daily lives of youth and their families. So it's obviously very important for them to have uh, timely access to services prior to a crisis. From my experience, if we could catch it early and more have more opportunities for families and agencies to come together, uh, it can help, it could do wonders. So you wanna look at all of those pieces and then you want to preempt it with, what can we do if we identify it early, for example? So we don't want to wait till we're zero to 10. We want to wait, we want to, we want to pick up on things when it's a one or a two or a three. So we see things coming. And it's not just the people surrounding the youth that need to identify this, it's the youth, him or herself. And so um, I want to empower my patients. But sometimes services are needed during a crisis, and we have to be able to respond with focused supports during those times as well. In their time of crisis, we need to be doing everything that we can to make sure that we're removing barriers so they are able to still receive timely access to those same services, because a lot of times it is life and death um, for a lot of these youth with complex needs. We can't operate in a silo anymore as a DD board. We have to rely on our partners in mental health, jobs and family services, mental health providers to really provide the wraparound that these kids need. I really like wraparound processes and service coordination processes or any kind of child and family team meeting where people are coming together across systems with the family to jointly de define what the needs are, but also to jointly define what the community can do. So we're owning the plan, we're owning the risk, and we're owning the safety together. <laughs>